Hello, and here I am, ready for our book study tonight on Rise of the False Gods. I gotta warn you, I, uh, getting wonky hair here, and it's gonna get worse because of the horrific numbers we're looking at with coronavirus. I made the conscious decision to stay in uh, for a while until the numbers go. When I say stay in, I mean, you know, not go to the, get, you know, with anybody, get my hair cut, anything like that. Um, just because. Somebody said, am I afraid of the virus? No, I'm just smart enough to know I don't want any part of it and I'm not going out where it is. So I'm going to do just fine here. As a matter of fact, for those of you who enjoyed my how I spent my corona confinement, I'm going to um, go back to it, except it's not going to be called that. Instead, it's going to be more like, uh, I don't know, uh, coffee time with Alicia or added attitude adjustment time. It's going to be a little bit, it's not going to be like all about metaphysics like the last one is, but it is going to be about getting um, getting through this in a healthy way. You know, a lot of people in unity would say, I'm not afraid of any virus and I'm just going to go and I'm going to affirm that God is not going to let me uh, you know, make me catch it. That, that is just not the way that metaphysics works. You know, God gave us a brain for a reason. And that's how we can figure out how to stay safe. And that's how we're able to not put extra pressure or anything on the doctors or their staff. And um, that the people that do get it, and you don't know. I saw a video last night of a, of a girl who was... Um, Golly, she was like 30, 36 years old, I think. And she was a gymnastics instructor and she doesn't know where she got it. She was staying at home with her cat and she got it. So we're gonna have some fun together. So keep your eyes open. I think I'm gonna start on Monday. I don't know that I'm gonna do it Monday through Friday or I don't know if I'm coming uh, if I'm going to be doing it seven days a week, we'll see. We'll see because I'll be here. And I know one of the biggest problems is not wanting to be alone. A lot of people have trouble when they have to be alone. So, got to be alone? Come join me. We're going to have, oh, I don't know. We're going to have some fun together every day coming up shortly. I already know what some things are, but I'm not, not going to give any spoiler alerts. So tonight we are looking, yes, as Cheryl says, Advent's coming. That could be a theme. That could be a theme. And I've already got another little piece of the theme, which I can divulge. It's going to be, uh, you know, home for the holidays, a new way. <laughs> Doing the holidays in a new way. You know, it's all about our consciousness and how we wish to live. And the story we want to tell when this is history. Do we want to grow or do we want to gripe? Choice is ours. Okay, so tonight we are going to be talking about spotting those false gods uh, that are out there and, and when they're at work because we have to learn to spot the activity of consciousness that is getting us, uh, that brings us problems and distractions and suffering so that we cannot do those behaviors anymore. All right, and so something occurred to me that I don't know if I, I don't think I ever shared it with you before, so I want to share it with you as we're going into this and we're talking about identifying uh, where the false gods are in our lives. Um, and I'm kind of hoping, any of you who are out there, that this might be a little bit more interactive tonight. I do think I can count on Cheryl because she's a good sharer. And I invite anyone else to share Start thinking, if you might, about stories that have come up in the news today 
I tried to find um, some headlines, but I was kind of like running late uh, when I got that thought. So we'll go there in a minute. Um, so I'm going to start off on page 90 at the top of the page, last paragraph. It says, uh, now look at the uh, metaphysics. We're, yesterday we talked about the different ways that false gods impact our lives. And said, so now let's look at the metaphysics. What is behind the appearance? That's what we have to do. We look at appearances and therefore we only address symptoms. We don't address what's behind the symptom, which is the cause. Um, all manifestation begins in mind. Everything starts with a thought. Okay, put on your seatbelt. Uh, some people might not like what I'm going to say next. Um, a lot of people like to make the Bible gender neutral. So instead of saying brother or um, sister or he or calling God he, in unity, there's a lot of people that have a problem with calling um, God he in the Bible or father. So we use the term uh, father, mother. But if we look at it at a, um, at a metaphysical level, because the male represents the female, the, the thinking uh, faculty and the female represents the feeling faculty, in order to have any kind of manifestation, we take a thought, connect it to a feeling, and have manifestation. Maybe Mother, Father, God is not the worst thing. But the one thing I want you to just consider with the word he, because we say that God is divine mind, that would make it, well, you know what? Now, Metaphysically, the mind is our combined thinking and feeling. So maybe Mother, Father, God is a possibility. But when we're doing metaphysical Bible interpretation and we're looking at stories and stuff, you will watch how if you're reading the story and looking at a deeper level, metaphysically, he represents the thinking faculty. So that's what started it. For example, um, in the story of Adam and Eve, um, Eve is the feeling faculty, uh, the emotions, and she got Adam to taste that fruit, right? It just goes to show that sometimes our emotions can get us in trouble. Our feelings can get us in trouble. Generally, for a healthy manifestation, we want to have a conscious thought, and then that will connect with a conscious feeling, and then we have manifestation. So this just says, all begins in thought. There is that thought behind it. The nature of the manifestation depends on the state of mind that holds the thought. Also, where and how mammon, which is materialism stuff, you know, money, and Baal, which is our lower carnal nature, our, our uh, sensual nature, there's nothing wrong with being sensual. Our senses are a gift, but it is the misuse of the sensual nature that gets us in trouble. Um, but we can't look at the problem when we're in the middle of it. You know, that's one of the hard parts, because if I am really into my human side, I have to, like, you know, try to shake myself out of it. <laughs> Best thing is to talk to someone who knows their metaphysics and they'll They'll remind us of that we're a little off track. Okay. You have heard me talk before about the difference between personal and principle. And I know when I try to explain that, some people go, I don't get it. I don't get it. Personal is something of the lower consciousness, the human thought, and the human emotion, the human feeling, and then the higher consciousness principle is about intuitive sensing okay so that's more aligned with spiritual thought and then the personal is on the lower level i, I have a great example so hopefully this will just make it all work for you we're going through right now in the supreme court they're talking about overturning obamacare and you see, 
what they did is they took a law that was put into place that is in actuality called, in principle, the Affordable Care Act. And the idea behind the Affordable Care Act is for people to be able to afford insurance, that people can afford to have insurance. Now, you see, that is, that is principle, looking out for the highest good, okay, wanting to send forth a positive cause. People can get insurance, and one of the most important things about insurance is preventative care, to, to, to make sure you get your checkups, to make kids, your kids get their checkups and inoculations and everything else. So that is principle, the Affordable Care Act. Then they start calling it Obamacare. Now that took it from principle to personal. So anybody that didn't like President Barack Obama, that automatically said, nope, I don't like Obama, I don't want Obamacare, okay? Big mistake, because something that can be very helpful can, was damaged because they made it personal, not principal. One of the biggest issues about Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, as it should be called, was the penalty, the tax on not getting insurance. What that said is, if you can get insurance, and you do not get insurance, you need to kick into this program. Because if you don't, and you have a need for medical care, and you can, you don't want to have to pay, don't want to, you can't pay. You know, remember I said my daughter was in the hospital, you know, a few days ago? Just the, the emergency room was like $3,600. I'm serious. So we have to, you know, we want Affordable Care Act and we want everybody to have insurance because if you have insurance, you don't have to worry about being in a predicament and really losing your quality of life or your ability to take care of yourself because you don't have insurance. Here's another thing. If people don't have insurance and they have huge medical bills um, and they cannot pay them, they, they go broke on it. People go broke on medical bills all the time. So if they go broke on it, yet we have a commitment to those people's health. Who then is going to pay for their health care? Who's going to pay for the, the Medicare, uh, the Medicaid, that is there to make sure all people are protected, okay? We must take care of each other. We are interdependent. So the people who didn't want to get insurance, they didn't want to be forced to it, and they didn't want to pay the, the penalty for not having it, they fought to have it taken away. Now, someone very near and dear to me refused now, they could have gotten the insurance for, I think it came to like $3,000 a year, maybe. And um, it was like $3,600 a year, I think. So it was like probably $300 a month. So they could have an insurance. They could have had their checkups. They could have had all kinds of preventative care. They could have tests, medication, doctor visits, hospitalization, all kinds of things for that $300 for the $3,600. The penalty for not having the insurance was $3,000, but they refused. They didn't want that $3,000. They fought it. They condemned who? Barack Obama. You know what? He did not make that plan all by himself. It was a bunch of people that all had to vote for it, or the majority had to vote for it. Do you see how when you bring personal into principle, very often principle loses. So I hope I hope you're kind of getting what I'm trying to get at. Let's look a little bit more personally at our own selves. Okay, can you think of something perhaps that um, 
that Donald Trump did that you don't like, that you think was unfair, that you think was wrong or evil? Okay. Would it still be wrong or evil if it came up that Obama had done it? Or someone you like? Think on that. Because if you think, well, okay, well, I, I don't like Trump, and he did it, and he's bad, and he's evil, and I'm not going to argue with you on that point. But I would also say that if Barack Obama or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or my, my man, Cory Booker, if any of them did it, I would be just as avid adamant it's wrong okay it it's hurtful it it does not support the good of the whole so when we introduce bias whether it's in that we're getting personal we want to be impersonal even if you can say bipartisan even bipartisan that kind of it, it suggests there's two sides. There's principle. That's all there is. That's why we have to learn how to work together, which I think I went off on a toot about the other day. Um, so we want to make sure that we do not have an unfair bias, whether that is on the conscious or the unconscious level. Boy, and if we got something going on the unconscious level, we got to dig it out. Did you ever meet someone and they kind of reminded you of someone you really liked and you automatically liked them? Why? You had an unconscious bias toward that person in front of you because they reminded you of someone you liked. On the other hand, if they reminded you of something you, someone you don't like, you automatically just don't like them, don't trust them. Why? Because there's an unconscious bias. So our job, what we're working on, is to bring the unconscious to conscious awareness so we can know. Now see, the false gods, they linger around in our unconscious, in our human uh you know, not paying attention part of our our world, our lives. So um, we want to learn how to root out, root out the what is behind the error, thoughts, words, and actions that we uh, deal with every day. So I, I grabbed a piece of paper and I quickly... Uh, jotted down some examples where we could look for where is the false god, you know, where's Waldo? Um, now, what you have to remember is everything, you have to be objective and that the universe is, is in a state of flux. There is absolute truth, but paradoxically, there are situations that that truth may manifest through. Let's look at an example. People, some people refuse to wear a face mask in the middle of a pandemic. Well, you know how I feel about that. Mask up, <laughs> keep your hands off your face and uh, keep your distance, okay? But there's people that they say, oh, this, you know, this virus is nothing. You, you can't tell me what to do. All right. Well, where's the false god in that? Is it mammon or is it Baal? Is it materialistic or is it ego? Hmm. So it would certainly appear that the ego is strong in that. Whether people just don't want to be controlled, maybe they were controlled all their life and they were not going to be controlled, or maybe, you know, uh, they're, they're a pub Republican and if the Democrat says you've got to wear it, I'm, no, I'm not going to wear it. That is called politicizing, and politicizing is about, it's, it's bail, it's ego and personal power. 
unfortunately every time we go to lower consciousness we lose the higher consciousness benefit okay we are a we are so many colors and natures and cultures and when you, you know I, I posted on Facebook today where two or more are gathered there will be a disagreement but our goal is to learn to work together toward the good of the whole sometimes we just have to agree to disagree and let the person go their way what makes a difference is when it starts to impact our lives our health okay so here's one that's coming up i think we're going to get a break from it this year because we are not going to be um visiting in person with our families but let's say a family political argument ruins your thanksgiving dinner have you ever experienced that I haven't that not no I gotta take that back I gotta take that back um, I work very hard not to let that happen I will not discuss hot topics in a family gathering because I want to have these precious moments to they're too rare to begin with and I want to make them special I don't want to taint them with negativity but we used to get some rouser going when <laughs> back in the day before my spiritual awakening the thing was it didn't bother me I was just out there to to fight I was a scrapper not physical I was a verbal scrapper and uh, I've grown and if you haven't had to grow well God bless you I have and I guess because I've had to grow, I appreciate it a lot more. So what is, this is where we look at all the, the aspects of this. What is going on with that political argument that's ruining a holiday? Is it ego? Just fighting for your opinion? Or is it a passion a passionate call for the good of the whole when you see that the the opposition what is it Joe Biden said we are not enemies we are opponents I think that's what said we're opponents not enemies and uh, so that's why you want to keep it keep it peaceful and if you can't have a peaceful discussion about first of all to me, politics and uh, family um, gatherings is not a good mix. Why? Because there's so many varieties of thought on it. And what can start off as a little difference of opinion can wind up in a brouhaha. And we don't want that tainting our precious time together. We want to reinforce our time together. So there's every possibility that mammon is not involved. Might you say that? I might say no mammon's there because many people who have been through the recent experience uh, the the recent election um, were very concerned because they wanted they have a belief that the economy is so good but the economy is so good so they're fearful that if the person they want to win doesn't win, they are going to suffer economically. And we know that that candidate pushed about all the evil that was going to happen if the other candidate won about all the, you know, everything was going to crash and burn and everything was going to be ruined. So they were, that was mammon, you see. Things are a little trickier. So if one person is fighting for their for their 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 beliefs their spiritual commitment the, their core values and someone else is concerned about their money you've got mammon in there back in the day when i used to have those pick those fights at the family picnic no i did not pick the fights i did jump all over the bait that i gotta have to say back then i was unenlightened i didn't i didn't get it you know um 
I didn't know that that we are all so different and we have to kind of breathe and value the relationship over the opinion or whatever so let's get off of that one um in california a man was charged with running a virtual kidnapping scheme from prison he was in prison and he ran a virtual kidnapping scheme i don't know if you're familiar with that <clears throat> but what it is is that uh, they would contact people and tell them that their loved one, they, they'd go around, you know, fishing around on Facebook and stuff and getting information on you. Then they'd find a way to contact you and say that your loved one, your, your niece, your granddaughter, and they would actually have a name and that they were, you know, in Madrid or something and their, their backpack was stolen or whatever. And, uh, they needed to have money right away. You know, they're being kidnapped all kinds of stuff and the people fell for it so what was at work there one would certainly say mammon right that materialism they wanted money they didn't care who they hurt so it was all about the money yes if that person that was perpetrating this crime had a background of um being disempowered and being desensitized through abuse they the prison's not going to sensitize them anymore so they've lost that so a piece of that is also it's a damaged ego so we have to look very carefully and address the things that are happening and look to the false god not only operating and how and why it's operating because then we can stop it um okay here's one home depot's black friday sales start now good lord what happened to, what happened to you know after thanksgiving and now it's barely after Halloween and we're having the Black Friday sales. You hear about it everywhere. Who's at work here? Mammon or Baal? It differs for each person according to their personal issues. If you have a sense of lack that you cannot afford what you want for your family and you say oh my gosh i can get that i can get that it's still error it's but this is an error of the emotions you want to get it then on the other hand there's greed that's pure materialism and we like to blame the stores don't we but it's called black friday because stores that ran in the red all year, they could make their money at Christmas. Now, what you have to be careful, I'm going to give you a pre-Christmas shopping warning. What happens is the earlier you start is not the earlier you stop. Most people start early, stop late, and they wind up with bills they can't afford to pay. That's not, that one though. That's not materialism, but it is Baal. It is the ego. It is that part of us that thinks we can buy love, that we want to make sure we give our loved ones so much that they will love us. But I've got to tell you, some of my best holidays were holidays where I scrimped and didn't have much to give, and very often it was homemade and uh, became treasured. So think on that. This was in the news today and it broke my heart. Detroit mother accidentally shoots one-year-old child in altercation over food delivery. There was a food delivery mishap and the people started to fight and they were fighting uh, pushing, shoving hammers, and she whipped out a gun and started shooting, and she shot her own child. 
Now, the child is not dead. Hopefully, the child will live. Nonetheless, what? she shot her own child over, over the fact that her chicken was delivered to a neighbor's instead of her house, and the neighbor ate it. <laughs> There's another. Was it worth it? Was a chicken dinner worth the, the horror of shooting your own child? Mammon at work? Fail at work. Is it materialism? Is that thought? That that 20 bucks she spent for that chicken was being taken from her? How dare somebody take my $20 worth of chicken? God, Art Linkletter sure had it right when he said people are funny, but not ha ha funny. Why did the woman feel the need to have a gun? Why did a fight over a $20, I'm saying $20, I don't know how much chicken it was, but there's no amount of chicken that you can buy and have delivered to your house that is worth whipping out a gun and shooting somebody. They're neighbors. We're told to love our neighbors, right? So we have ego involved in there. That's my chicken. We might have materialism. That's my 20 bucks. And then what happens is, when we attack someone, then they automatically attack back. So you see how that works? So what's happening is the false gods are just, they're doing a jig all around the place because they're in high, high motion. They're doing their thing. And we, our relationships and our oneness is being degraded. Okay. I hope you got that. I'm I'm really running off track. Oh, oh, I think I'm running late too. I I went off on a toot, so I didn't mean to go that far. Oh, I wanted to get through this today, so I think I'm going to run just a few more minutes over. Um, okay. Uh, these are the things you want to do, and you might want to write them down. Okay. Practice with headlines. And when things come up in your life, ask yourself, what is, what is at, what's going on here? Is it, is it mammon? Is it bail? Because you can, once you figure it out, you can address it because you can apply the truth to it. So where and how is money involved? Oh, was that $20 a chicken? Was it worth it? I don't know. Where and how is ego involved? Do we feel someone has stepped on our rights or whatever? How does this separate us? In all of the examples I gave today, people were separated from each other. They were separated from the oneness that is the true joy and purpose of life. We have to ask, what will the ultimate impact on the individual be? What will the outcome be? Will it be positive or will it be negative? What will the ultimate impact on the whole be? Let's look at the, you know, the, the mask thing. Um, the ultimate impact on the whole for wearing masks is positive we can at least try to stay healthy until we do get a vaccination or we do find a way to beat it or it dies out, which it could do. What will the ultimate impact on the individual be that refuses to wear a mask? They risk contagion. They risk getting it. And even if one person is sick and hurting and spreading it to others, it's not good for the good of the whole. Think about what quadrant of consciousness is being affected. Where's that coming from? Is it coming from human thoughts, things I think, things I believe, or is it coming from our emotions, our feelings? So it's always, if there's problems, it's always coming from lower consciousness. So I encourage you to keep looking to higher consciousness. Ah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna run late.
Okay, politicians receive money from lobbyists and manufacturers of guns in exchange for favoring the agenda of the organizations and lobbyists. Now, lobbyists are not all bad. Lobbyists uh, go and promote to the politicians something that's important to them. When money gets involved, mammon. But if a person's doing it for a sense of personal power, bail. Okay, politicians want to retain their position. They like the lifestyle it affords them, as well as the perceived power. Today we're hearing a lot about the uh, politicians who are not wanting to... Uh, to declare the fact that Biden won the election because they don't want to upset their their constituency that happens to support Trump, okay? Because if they get, if they tick off, even though they might think like, no, this was a fair fight, but if they don't stand up for it because they don't want to lose their job because if they pardon the expression, piss off their, their constituency, they're not going to get another vote. But listen, please, a leader leads, even if that means sometimes taking their constituency up higher and saying, look, I know that's not what we wanted, and I know that's not what we believe is best, but this is the way it is. Leaders lead, and leaders lead not by being, being, um, person, what do you call that? Catering to person, people pleasers. We're not here to be people pleasers, my friends. We are here to be God pleasers. Okay, spirit uh, pleasers. Um, how about just energy pleasers? The pleasers for the good of the whole, that everyone should work together. Because Jesus said so. I hope you, I hope you, uh, you know, it's really hard when I ugh, get into stuff that's kind of touchy. But what else am I here for? If I'm afraid to t talk to you straight out, I'm not doing my job as a minister, as a spiritual teacher, and I don't want to tell you what to think. I want to teach you how to think. And that's what I'm trying to do today, is trying to teach you how to think as we try to nav navigate the insanity that we are currently immersed in. And I don't have all the answers, my friends. I don't, and I don't claim I do. All I can tell you is I love you, and I have a passion for you, and I want everything that is right and good and perfect for you. So I'm going to tell you straight out what I believe to be true. Whew, okay, ran over. I apologize. So tomorrow, as much as I thought we were going to be done with this, we will complete this chapter tomorrow, if I cannot run off at the mouth. God bless you, my friends.